Hey guys, we're back with the house in Fauna Morgana. I was going to play some Fire Emblem, but my controller wouldn't turn on. So it's fate telling me to play- well, it's fate grand order telling me to play some more of this. So, uh, we got to 1591, I believe? I think. And we had a, uh, time waiting sequence where the maid waited. Well, should I call it the G Giselle or now the maid? I mean, both work, but I think there is a distinction between the two. But anyway, the, the time wait sequence was pretty cool. I always liked those. Uh, you can only think of a couple, like, you know, Steins Gate had one in Sousa Hazra. Well, kind of one in Sousa Hazra. Uh, Ume and Echo had kind of one in episode six. There's this one light novel warrior that had one. I forget what it was called, but basically it was just a guy hitting his head on a wall for like a billion years. And then his girlfriend was like, you know what, I have enough of this. And his girlfriend is also God. She's just like, you, you can just go, be happy. And he's like, sweet, thanks. Anyway, we're back with Prelude, the first visitor. For a member of an esteemed noble family, Hayden was a bit on the eccentric side. He only hired a handful of servants, but he was not fond of clamor. There's a single chef, a physician, servant to take care of all the cleaning, and then me, who served as his personal assistant. Whenever I got the chance, Hayden would chase me down and make me practice pro proper etiquette. According to him, I had much to learn. You are, at least technically, a servant of the Rhodes family, young lady, so I can't have you going around playing the country bump bumpkin act. Yes, sir. Seeing the maid with this expression is weird. <laughs> I'll have to do something about that accent, too, while we're at it. I have an accent? Thicker than bloody molasses. Now I have no interest in sticking my nose into your business, asking you where you're hail where you hail from. But while you're here while you're here, you must act the, the part, young lady. Lucky for you, I'm retired and have all the time in the world. I'll teach you everything you need to know about proper etiquette. Uh, all right. Speak up, will ya? Y yes, sir. Hayden did not go easy on me either. In addition to my day-to-day -day duties, I studied etiquette, the language, proper pronunciation, and formal diction. Anytime I made the slightest mistake, he would shout his dissatisfaction. Listen carefully. A servant is the face of a house. A servant's gaff? Gaff? Is her master's gaff? Like... I always keep this in mind. You're not just a maid. You must always act with elegance and grace. You must always maintain your composure, even when the house is falling down on you. Whatever happens, you deal with it quickly and quietly. Your language must be immaculate. No ums, uhs, or pauses. For any reason. Y yes, sir. No stammering, either. Sorry. Bloody heck, you're not gonna make this easy, are you? Whose idea was, was it that a country bumpkin would make a good servant? They didn't give him a piece of my mind. I'm not from the country. Is she puffing her cheeks out? Or is that just the angle? Not even slightly. I was raised, raised in the capital. Is that so, eh? Prim and proper city girl, are ya? That case, you should be a quick study. Absolutely. You can learn anything in a week, tops. Piece of cake. Is that so? Alright, then starting tomorrow, I'm tripling your lessons. I think she was puffing out her cheeks. And then think this through. <laughs> In addition to being my master, Hayden was my teacher. When he yelled, he grew twice his size, and I shrunk to half mine. But also, it wasn't all that un an unpleasant experience, because I knew he wasn't raising his voice to belittle me. His instruction may have been harsh, but it was human interaction. There were people around that I could talk to, and that was wonderful. I started to regain some of my humanity. Unlike me, you still got a long... Life ahead of you, young lady. I don't know what kind of life you lived, but I can't imagine it's been all that easy. Not many servants your girls your age without a home to go back to. Which is why, which is why you need to learn this. Once you've got all the rules and customs down, you'll be able to hold your own at any noble's estate. But shouldn't you shouldn't have any trouble keeping yourself employed? I'm sure, you think I'm just a loud, obnoxious old man, but I believe we met for a reason. So I hope you'll stick with me. 
This guy isn't a bad guy. I uh don't think I don't think about you like that at all, Master. You're a remarkable man. One more time. I deeply appreciate your generous consideration, Master, from the bottom of my heart. A. I didn't know I didn't know much about Hayden's situation. Why he had retired to this mansion all alone, away from the rest of his family. But any time I asked about them, he would say, That happens sometimes. With a melancholic frown. Before long, two years had passed. By that point, by, by, by that point, my etiquette had improved enough to satisfy his high standards. At that time, the mansion underwent a number of decor changes. I said and brought in sculptors to work on different areas of the house. Do you think the painting guy is going to be, uh... Door 1, White Hairs Girl's father? I, I kind of thought that to begin with. I, was like, I mean, that's the only painter we know of. So it makes sense to draw that conclusion, but... I think that's a high possibility now that we're back here. Especially since we're back here in 1591 instead of like 16 or whatever. Because that means this is around the time he would be in the mansion. Because... They were about... Mm, eight, he was 18? So, yeah. Nelly would just be... Wait, uh... Nine... What year? Let's say it's 1604. Oh, and that doesn't add up. That means Nelly's already born. What year was it? Was it 1608? Uh, story page. The story page has the date listed. 1603. Okay, so that that means Nelly should be four. I mean, 12 right now. I mean, four right now. Sorry. If she, was, if she is a 16 in door 1, she could be wrong about that. Anyway, he also sealed off rooms that were not in use, such as Observation Tower in the chapel. But the painter was here, in the mansion. So maybe I did get her birthday wrong. It's a sad thing, seeing heirs with so many memories of Burmy falling into disuse. But as a mere servant, I had no say in the matter. In addition, Hayden seemed to greatly enjoy renovating the house, so I watched him warmly. The furniture was all gradually replaced, gorgeous paintings hung on the walls, colorful, colorfully patterned curtains installed, and a brilliant rose garden planted. Those roses come from all across the world. Nowhere else you could see so many different varieties in one place. It's beautiful. Oh, I just realized something. The person that put that painting there in that door three, that's probably the maid, wasn't it? I, I'm not for sure why. Maybe to try to get white-haired girl Michelle to remember the past? Or for any other reason, really. Did you know that in the city, people are starting to call the mansion Rose Manor? Rose Manor. Heh <laughs> I think there used to be nothing but weeds here. Amazing how much, how much it has changed. Never thought I would see this garden turn into something so beautiful. Are you fond of roses, young lady? Yes. Grand ones, especially. Radios doesn't mean a great deal to me. They remind me of a time long past. Given one as a gift for you? No, I believe. I was the one who gave the rose. So yeah, the roses are a symbol of my feelings. They're very precious to me. I gave you a rose as a gift. You collected from its stem and placed it in my hair. Am I remembering correctly? My memories are so vague now. Can't even remember the look on your face that day. There, some kids I'd like to give roses to myself. Who? Talking about his grandkids, right? My grandchildren. Oh my, you have grandchildren? Eh? Oh, well, we haven't been in touch for some time. Last I saw them was four years ago, when my when my second grandchild was born. He's about to say third because sweetest girl in the world with lovely flaxen hair. She's gonna be a real beauty when she grows up. Anyway, they're wonderful kids. One day, I want to hand this garden over to them. Each and every rose containing my hope that they'll lead comfortable, healthy lives free of strife. Sure your wish will come to pass. Your grandchildren will have wonderful lives. Hey. The grief of not having you around still weighed heavily on my mind, but I was slowly approaching contentedness. 
Life with Hayden was slow and un uneventful, peaceful and relaxing. I imagine my heart was seeking anything to alleviate its pain. It found that in the beautifully remodeled mansion, the garden blooming wildly with roses, and my time with Hayden. I was even beginning to think this life was enough for me. That I'd be okay with this being the end, if it meant more of the tranquility I felt. I was, like a coward, considering giving up the fight. Please do not forgive me for even considering such a thing. Hayden seemed to be in high spirits today. A gift had apparently arrived from his son, who lived far away. And it was a tea set, some leaves, and a small jar of sugar. Miss! Miss! How can I be of service, Master? Bring me up a pot of this, will you? Be careful not to steep it for too long. I want to get it just right for the best flavor. As you wish, Master. Heh <laughs> You seem quite pleased. Psh, why would I be? Will you shun this old man for years sends him a paltry gift on a whim? Just entertaining his fancy. <laughs> Your tea is ready, Master. Ah, what a wonderful smell. Tea and roses are life's best dang spices. Now let's see what the, that boy chose for me. It's no good, I'll be sure to write him an angry letter. He looks so happy. Must really love his family. Mmm, it's a little bitter. Shall I brew another pot? Nah, it's not your, your fault. Must be something in the leaves. Would you like to add some sugar then? There's a small jar of it with the tea set. Now that's some bloody fine sugar he's procured. I'm, part of me is like, it's poison! But we know he's alive, so. <laughs> White as snow and sparkles in the light. He chose it just for you, Master. Bloody egg, what demon possessed him? Alright, give me two spoons then. Yes, Master. Here you are. Mmm. Ah, splendid. This is some exquisite tea. The sugar balances the bitterness of the leaves perfectly. Guess that boy does have s some. Master? Oh. It was! M master, Master! Gah! The doctor! I need to find the doctor! Nah. Ah! Water! Water! I'll get you water right away! So please, please hang in there! Oh, you're supposed to get, like, charcoal. Thanks to the quick treatment provided by his personal physician, Hayden survived. But he didn't make it out with much more than his life. He was permanently better than by the affair. Evidently, the sugar I put in his tea had contained poison, which is which has done irreparable damage to his nerves and muscles. Most of his body was completely immobile, except for his left arm. Can I bring you something? Some water? I've had more than my fill of water. You don't need to wait on me hand and foot. <laughs> the face you need says you need to distract yourself by working. I... Remember what I told you? That Obol's family servants must always act with elegance and grace. Was this guy alive in 1603? I don't remember. I know he was talked about, but I don't remember if he's alive or dead. You must always maintain your composure. But how can you expect me to remain composed? I, I, if, I, if I only examined the sugar more thoroughly. You never would have noticed, young lady. I examined the sugar. Didn't see a bloody thing wrong with it. He's dang crafty, that's for sure. Why would he do this? His inheritance, I, s I presume. Something must have come up, and he needed money quickly. That's no reason to poison your own father. Blood is nothing more but an obstacle to ambition. Or maybe he just hated me. How could anyone possibly hate you? Perhaps that could be said of the me you know. But when you live as long as I have, you're bound to make an enemy or two. Mine just happened to be my son. I was planning to give him any everything anyway. He didn't have to do this. It all would have been his. Master. Killing me doesn't accomplish anything. But I guess it doesn't matter much. <sighs> Say, could I ask you something, young lady? What can I do for you? I don't want it to get out that Hayden Rhodes is poisoned, so could you tell people that I passed away peacefully with a beautiful nurse tending to my every need? You're not dead yet. Please don't talk like that. You're scaring me. No stammering. But 
Not saying it'll happen eventually, immediately, but I am an old man. And one day, you'll wake up and I'll be gone. This is about my own pride, not my son. The last thing I want is to go out with a black spot on my name. Tell me you'll do this, Giselle. He's never said my name before. As you wish. Thank you. You're a peculiar girl, you know. Sometimes you, you seem greener than the leaves in summer. Sometimes you seem like you've seen 12 kinds of hell. And every so often, you seem not of this world. I... Your skin is pale, your hands as cold as ice. At one point I thought you might be Death himself. But I was wrong about that. You have too big a heart to be Death. You care too much. You must be carrying a very heavy cross on your back. I... What am I supposed to do? I don't want to lose you, Lord Hayden. I don't want to lose this life. You have someone, don't you, young lady? Someone you're dying to meet again. Y yes, but... I don't know anymore. I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep waiting. If something doesn't happen soon, I, I don't think I can hold myself back, myself together much longer. I was so close to breaking down. It was you who kept me on my feet. I'm sure you've tried to remain strong plenty of times, so I'll give you some different advice. I trick for you when you think you're losing hold of yourself. Build a cocoon. A cocoon? A sturdy shell to keep your weak inner self safe. This world has no interest in protecting you, only swallowing you whole. So you mustn't readily expose your true self. You build a cocoon, play the role you need to play. That way, the real you will, will remain unharmed. It's not pleasant to hide yourself like that, but it's better than letting the world crush you. But a word of warning, if you spend too long in the cocoon, the real you is liable to disappear forever. You'll be swallowed up by your own protective shell. Turned into a butterfly, right? Hope you find whoever it is. Before it's too late. Now, I think I'll get some sleep. All this talking's worn me out. Ah, as you wish. Good night, Master. See you in the morning. Hey, see you in the morning, young lady. That's a death flag. The next day, Hayden was dead. Yep. He strangled himself with his left hand. What? I. Is that possible? You can't strangle yourself, can you? Like, well, unless you put yourself in, like, a certain position. He's like, you'll pass out before and then your grip will kind of, you know. Like, how is that possible? I should have been more attentive. Should have recognized how much pain he was in. How much he crushed him to have been betrayed by his own family. Should have realized how he truly felt. How fragile he really was. It fell into a hopeless gloom. Could have hardly believe that the quiet life I had finally attained had been shattered in the blink of an eye. Hayden's other servants quickly went it their own ways. I vividly remember the dirty looks they all gave me. Everyone who knew how he had died assumed I had done it. I had no reason to kill him, though. They had done more than enough to believe so, for I had, indeed, been the last person to see him alive. I held firmly to the story he had asked me to tell. While I was unable to convince the other servants, his family was far more accepting of the story that he had departed for the next world happily. But that it did not make the truth any less heartbreaking. Especially since I was the only one who knew it. Why does this always have to happen? I was happy. But I could never seem to keep hold of it for more than a flash. Despair always comes marching in to rip it away. What? What am I doing here? What kind of person were you, Michelle? What kind of person was I? Oh my, you look positively miserable. I forgot. Oh my dear, you look positively miserable. What? Why should you despair at the death of some strange old geezer? Morgana. Was Hayden? One of those you wish to be reconstructed? Ha! Huh. No interest in that wrinkled bag of bones. If he was one of them, do you really think I would have let him go so peacefully? Peaceful? You call that peaceful? Wait, so hold on. She wants to reconstruct the sinners, as she called them? I don't think that's mentioned before. Anyway. Peaceful. You call that peaceful? You call his misery peaceful? I most certainly do. Since you do not seem to understand this, the pain of death lasts but an instant. The worst torture can only be inflicted upon the living. 
Sending two loved ones against one another, manipulating one into taking the other's life, and forcing him to live with that. The stage hasn't even been set yet, my dear. You would have me play a part in that? Indeed. You agreed to accompany me. You're here to be my guide. And you're doing a wonderful job of it so far. I... I haven't done anything. Oh, but you killed that old man, did you not? Yeah. Thanks to you, my wish is one step closer to fruition. What? What, what do you... What do you mean I killed Hayden? You mean they claim you didn't? Tell me, who was it? That put the poison trigger in his teeth. No, no, I didn't mean to. Your intentions are irrelevant. Everything moves along the path forged by my wish. You shall continue to follow its will. <sighs> you know what? I'm done feeling like this. I don't want anyone else to go through what Hayden did. What are you going to do about it? I... I'm done listening to you. Without me, you have no influence over this world. Uh huh? So I'll... I'll die. Take my own life right here and now. I grabbed a nearby knife and held the tip against my breast. My hands are shaking, my heart pounding. My whole body reacted with terror, but... Could have sworn I heard, heard Morgana gasp. This was her one weakness, I thought. What are you thinking? Don't do this, yourself. Don't be foolish. Put the knife down right now. I, I'm... I'm done. Trusting anything you say. Giselle, put the knife down. Missed you so very much, Michelle. I wanted nothing more than to see you again. But if my being Morgana's guide is going to cause other people suffering, then I can't. It's all over, Morgana. Ah, uh, huh? There's no blood? Not even pain. Why? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Told you not to be foolish. Well, you just wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> Such a silly girl. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> Couldn't even die if I wanted to. Learning that absolutely crushed me. My backup plan, the one escape route I had thought available to me had been ripped away. My spirit crumbled, and I felt myself sinking into a vast darkness. I began losing my grip on myself, which is when I called, recalled Haven's advice. Build a cocoon. It's the only option I had left, my final chance of protecting myself. Although ultimately, I was unsuccessful in that endeavor, as you know. But by that point, my mind and spirit had all been all but lost. Eroded away by years of solitude, the witch's whispers, the brief glimmer of happiness, and the eternal boundless darkness that had left me in. It was in that moment that all light drained from my eyes, and it was in that moment that the maid was born. Okay. Now we have the maid. Whoa, it's been ages! I think, is this replaying that scene that was in like the first video I did? Which, I, I recorded that like, what, eight months ago now? Something like that. Oh dear, smell, come over here. There's so many beautiful flowers. Now, Nelly, there's no need to run. You're going to fall and you can't say I didn't warn you. Hello, I've never seen you before. Are you the new maid? Okay, this is just when they first got to the mansion, I assume. Good afternoon, Lady Nelly. That is correct. It is an honor to serve you. Oh, did you do all this? I did not. The garden was your grandfather, Lord Hayden's work. Wow, is grandfather a wizard? <laughs> Perhaps he was. I'm sure he would be delighted to know you like it. Your grandfather like flowers? Yes, he loved them quite dearly. Wow, I love flowers too. I've never seen a garden with so many pretty flowers. Did you know this kind of flower is called a rose? Just like our name. I don't get it. Well, I guess they do sound alike. I assume the French word for rose is similar. I like the flowers. You're, you're a very sweet little girl. Heh <laughs> Oh, she didn't laugh! So what's your favorite color of rose? I, I like all colors. But you don't like any the most? That's too bad. My favorite is pink. Pink roses are so pretty. Indeed they are. Ah jeez, there you are, Nelly. Oh, my apologies. Please don't mind my sister. Oh, not at all. We're having the most wonderful time. That's good. Imagine we'll be seeing each other around, so it's a pleasure to... 
Here you smell, do you, do you smell? Let's see what the inside's like. I think this is my own, very own room. Uh, s slow down, really. I beg your pardon. The inseparable siblings ran out towards the mansion, hand in hand. It was a heartwarming sight. But the next moment, when they stepped inside, they saw something else. The darkness enveloping the mansion seemed to flare up. The open door a gaping maw to the hungry bells. The whole house looked as though it was cackling. It was, I presume, the witch's Morgana's madness taking form. Manifestation of how she felt now that her centuries in the making wish was bearing fruit. Those two children were the ones Morgana had been waiting for. And I still had any willpower to fight left in, in me. Would have taken them by the hands and sent them somewhere far away. I would have done something before the house swallowed them up. But instead, I just gently lowered my eyes. Misfortune would surely sink its teeth into those two children before long. Pain and misery would befall them. I knew no good lay ahead for them, but my heart had all but frozen solid. And my hands taking and my hands full taking care of myself. So I let Hayden's beloved grandchildren fall into the witch's hands. I was for all intents and purposes Morgana's mor marionette. At long last It's Moonlight Sonata again! At long last it has arrived. Moonlight Sonata. I've been waiting for this song since I thought it played like ten episodes ago. <laughs> the time I've been waiting for so long has arrived. Darling, devoted Giselle, I know not how to describe for you the fiery excitement burning within me. Oh, I know. I can tell you my story. I'll tell you exactly what that mild-mannered little boy once did. They'll be open to listening now, won't you, my dear? You'll surely understand that I'm, I'm doing nothing wrong. Because you're my ally, my trusty servant. You and I, we live in the same world. We're as close as family. Are we not? Yes, as you say. <laughs> so let us curse them, all of them. Let's inflict a pain worse than physical torture on them. Let's put their souls on the rack for all eternity. Curse them. Make them suffer. Curse them. Now listen carefully, Giselle. This is a tale of wicked men. My curse upon them. So did... Did Mel do something wrong? The witch better curses for some time. The bile overflowing from her words, the pure unadulterated hatred brewing within, consumed me more than the horrifying things they described. She was brutally honest, each word a carefully sharpened blade of animosity. How much bitterness did you have to carry inside you to become like her? How long did you have to feel nothing but hatred to become like her? I felt like if I let my guard down, I'd be consumed by your enmity. I'd become mine, and I'd grow to despise them myself. All the while, I kept my mind on one single thing. That is what was left in my mind, locked away inside a shell of my own, of my own creation. It was that solidary truth that allowed me to hold on to my human emotions, to continue believing. I'm always waiting. My love will never fade. When I was still my old self, I called them Master and would do anything for them. Michelle. That was their name. They were beautiful, had pearly white skin and ruby eyes. They are going to come for me. I think someone's smudging out all the faces. <laughs> Michelle, all I can remember about you is your name, your glassy white skin, your fiery red eyes, and your snow-colored hair. Nothing else. And that's why, when I saw her that night, dripping from the storm raging outside, I thought, they're finally here. Because they didn't remember enough. Didn't know anybody. You already know who I speak of, don't you? The person who called upon the girl's man in that faded stormy night. The girl with almost translucently pale skin, chillingly white hair, and eyes like jewels. Ah, what a beautiful girl. Her hair, her eyes, her porcelain skin. It all matches the person in my memories. She must be. The one I've been waiting for. If she is... So, is the white-haired girl Michelle? Is something the matter? No. Just that I felt like I felt someone watching this. <laughs> it's only your imagination, I'm sure, and it's Mel watching it through the door crack. I remember that. If not your imagination, perhaps some unso unseen force was watching you. Unseen force? Are you familiar with how people refer to this mansion? 
rose manor. Yes, indeed. It's called a rose manor because you can smell the sweet fragrance of the rose garden, even at a great distance. But that's not what I meant. It is said that a witch resides within the house. A witch? I've not heard any such stories. You probably want to know. It was a very, very long time ago. Nothing you need to concern yourself with. You have a peculiar presence about you. Should I consider that a compliment? <laughs> peculiar presence, she says. Does she send something in me as I do her? This has to be her, then. Her name. I need to ask her name. It's getting late. You should get some rest. The room has already been set aside for you. But first, may I ask you one thing? Yes? I do not believe you have given me your name yet. My name? My name is... Michelle. I'm a genius. I knew it. You... You're the one. What? You're the one I've been waiting for. Um... I haven't heard so, so much in anticipation of this moment. So that I could, re I could reunite with you. Um... You came to this place to see me again, did you not? How tied to those wonderful memories, though you can make it back to me. Never gave up hope. I always believed, and I hope you'll praise me for that. I ask you, to please say my name. To please make me... Um, I... I don't know anything about you. Well... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's going to be confusing me for someone. We've never met before now. I mean, I saw that coming, but... <laughs> you jest. You are Michelle, are you not? That is my name, yes? It's a fairly common name. Surely you're confusing me with... That cannot be. The white, that white hair, white skin, those red eyes. That name. The name of the Archangel. Everything about you is the same. How can you say you're not my Michelle? Please, Michelle. Remember for me. S stay away from me. Ah. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Um... You would reject me? I'm so sorry. I honestly don't know you. Do you care nothing anymore for the time we spent together? We have not spent any time together. You would deny everything? I'm sorry. I see. I see. So you feel nothing for me anymore? You do not need to say anything. I understand. You're feeling a great deal of disgust towards me. No, I... Perhaps it is fear. Yes, you are always so kind. You will not easily allow yourself to succumb to hatred. I understand. Please, forget everything I have said. Who are you? I... I am... I met a simple maid. Nothing more. Laughable, isn't it? No longer recognize Michelle as anything more than a concept. Man or woman, elderly or infant, as long as they had white hair, red eyes, and the right name, they were you. I needed anything I could get. I was so desperate, the thought ne never even crossed my mind that she was not you. What do you think, seeing me like this, and I'm helpless and hopeless? Listen to this, Morgana. Michelle is back. She's finally come for me. She does not remember anything, it seems. Not me, not her past, nothing. She saw me and was afraid, in fact. Are you listening, Morgana? Ah, darling, devoted Giselle, you poor pitiful soul. That must have been quite harrowing. Harrowing? Harrowing. But don't, don't worry, you still have me. Besides, this might, be, this might not be your only chance. As long as you would continue, Michelle could ap appear before you again. You think she'll remember me next time? I can't say, except to Michelle. You do have another option, though. Forget Michelle yourself and seek out a new master. Someone who can be yours, someone dedicated and faithful, who needs you. Someone worthy of this mansion. Someone who needs me? That's right. Michelle didn't need you after all. It's alright, don't worry. You have plenty of time. Hey, it's Mel. Alright, so the white-haired girl, but she showed up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
She's just in the last scene. What do you think I am, an idiot? <laughs> so she's gonna skip all through all of door one. I wonder. Remember, that's when Nelly like wanted the maid to redecorate her room so she could talk to her. I remember that. And when Mel talked to her in the library. Forget exactly how that scene went down, but I remember it existed. And, uh, there's the play. There's probably something before that, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, okay, this is them getting ready for the play. And then, that's where Mel and the white haired girl last saw each other. I assume. And that's the failure where you saw the, the beggar. And I assume that's the alley when they talked around the corner. I think. I think that's what happened. Did you get a CG? For this? What's this new? Huh. I don't remember. It's... It's raining again today. I kind of wonder what happened to him. Gary fled from the mansion. Although, I suppose it doesn't matter to me. The witch is surely watching him. Such a dreadful storm. Sounds like someone crying. I was at that point, completely out of my mind. Broken. My smiles, frowns, and gasps had all been replaced by imitations. Shortly afterwards, the flaccinated boy moved out of the house and went on to become a priest. Oh! Whatever guy had... But never learned what happened to Mel. The girl, the girl fell ill a few years later, her disease eventually taking her life. But the boy never once returned home. You're talking about Nellie or the white-haired girl? What's wrong with that matter of disease? The girl's family crumbled. Couldn't make myself to grieve for them, or to reflect on hate and sorrowful end. Did Nellie have a disease? Wait. She got a disease and... Okay, okay. I see. Simply waited for time to begin moving once more. That sucks. 1603 to 17... What's it? 1707. Descent. The second visitor. I'll call it there. We'll be back next time, guys, with some more of the House in Fauna Morgana when we go on to the second door and see how the maid handled that. I don't know if it'll be longer than this first door was or if it'll just be equally as short. I can't really see them stretching it on too much because the second door, aside from, you know, Pauline's story and the Beast twist, didn't have too much to it. So, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. See you guys then. Bye.